Today, we are focused all on research about Facebook groups and how to make Facebook groups amazing. And the most important thing about Facebook challenges, guess what? The secret source of Facebook challenges, you know if you've done them, the secret source is how hyper-engaged your Facebook group is. And so it's fantastic that we have Helen Alderson here today to walk us through that. Um, Helen, go to the next slide where we kind of introduce ourselves a little bit. I think most of you know who I am. I'm the founder and CEO of GivePanel. GivePanel is a, um, a social fundraising tool and we make fundraising on Facebook just a lot easier with Facebook challenges and also stewardship of your organic Facebook fundraisers. Um, and uh, we all need it to be a little bit easier at the moment, don't we, Facebook fundraising, let's be honest. Um, so uh, we also have Helen today. So Helen, I've been working with Helen for, well, years now and she helen is amazing she works with a lot of our top give panel customers on um facebook group engagement and moderation so as you know some of you who have run a facebook challenge it can be a lot of work looking after those communities and so helen is an expert her company is an expert at doing community management she's going to introduce herself in a minute and we've got some this is a short webinar folks as well so I know, look, I know there's a lot of virtual meetings. And I know it's so tempting to dual screen and answer those emails and answer those Teams and Slack messages while you're um, listening. But this is only half an hour followed by some Q&A and you're going to get some real value on this half an hour and you can ask us anything at the end. So we're going to keep the data and presentation and the research quite short and then we're going to have some Q&A. So it doesn't take long to kind of focus on it. Then you can get back to lunch and to your emails afterwards. Um, so, 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 so listen up. Um, there's some absolute gold research here and some absolute gold learnings um, for your Facebook challenges and your and your groups here. So hopefully you can you can engage with that. Um, if you're still tracking with me, just put a emoji or a yet why or something in the chat to let us know that you're still there and engaged. You know, we're just by ourselves in our rooms here. So our reactions, Zoom got some good reactions. Yeah, let's have some reactions. That's good. We need some emojis. I'm loving that. Um, Helen, can you see those coming up? I yeah, I've just seen I'm... Philip there compliment my jumper, which um, you were all have always been my favourite Philip out of everyone. Thank you. I had to change my hoodie because it was uh, had too many stains on it, but there we are. Um, I've I've uh, I've put on a new T-shirt for you. Okay, Helen, over to you. Helen's going to show us some research. I might dip in with um, some of the questions that Helen's going to ask you in the chat. So be ready to answer Helen's questions in the chat, and I'll host that a bit. But over to you, Helen. Thank you so much for doing this webinar with us. Um, it's just absolutely fab research that you've put so much effort into. So over to you to explain us what you what you've been doing. Great, right. thanks, Nick. So just as a, a really brief introduction, Nick's done a great job anyway. So I'm the director at Alderson Fundraising. We're a team of, of 26, fund, uh, 26 fundraisers and we specialise specifically in Facebook group moderation for charities. We also do work with a number of charities on their paid ads moderation. And we're, we were actually closing in on working with 100 groups probably by the end of this month or next, as well as supporting charities to raise uh, just, well, 10 million almost. So this, this report, we think, is a really good way to celebrate those milestones. So super excited to be able to, to, to preview it with you all. OK, so session overview. And just before we get started, if you do have any questions, pop them in the chat as we'll go. And, and again, there, are, there is time at the end to, to go through those. Easy question to ask you all before we get going. Have you managed a Facebook challenge before? So yes or no in the chat uh, as I'm going through this. So what we're going to cover in the session overview are the motivations for why we did the research. I'm going to give you some context for, for what we did. We're going to look through key findings from that research, some tips for you to improve engagement. The report itself that you'll be getting after this has loads more tips. We're going to look at what else you'll find in the report. Uh, so again, this is just scratching the surface of, of, of what the report actually goes through. Got some key takeaways for you. Like I mentioned before, some questions and answers and what your next steps are going to be. Have we had- So that? Helen, we had, we had quite a few respondents to your question. I would say 90% of people have definitely run a Facebook challenge before. So we've got a very kind of educated bunch here who I'm sure are looking for the data. A few though that haven't before. So they're probably like considering, you know, what do I need to know? What are, what, what are the first things? And some, um, Will here just first time go ongoing now. So some are very, very new to their first Facebook challenge. Um, so um, uh, just a fun fact for you, if you if you didn't realize Facebook challenges have actually been going since 2018. The very, very first one was 2018, that far ago. So they're five years old just. 
just five years and one month old. So you you might think they're a new thing. They're certainly not a new thing. Very established. Um, so Helen, um, th th we're mostly mostly experts here, I would say. Right. Okay, so motivations for why we did the research. And, and this looks at, so, so we very much have what we already know about our groups, which is very medium and long term. And what we ultimately want to know is what the immediate impact of, of group engagement and, and by extension group moderation uh, has on, on the challenges. So what we already know, and let's just be dead, dead clear, we're all fundraisers and we all know how important supporter experience is. The, these groups are often the first point of contact with loads of new supporters. You all know that 80 and 90 percent of people who come into these groups are new to database. So it gives them it gives these supporters that opportunity to really fall in love with your cause. You have the opportunity to foster long term support. So 80 percent of people who make a second donation based on their experience the first time. Uh, sorry, 80 percent of people make their second donation based on their experience the first time around. Which makes perfect sense. So you wouldn't if you if you wouldn't if you went to a restaurant and got an awful meal, would you go back? Probably not. And it's exactly the same with with these Facebook groups with your cause. So you have to give them that great experience. And the prolonged opportunity for to, to interact with with these new supporters. So I can't think of any other fundraising event where from the moment a supporter signs up all the way through them completing a challenge, you could speak to those supporters every single day. A, without threat from your GDPR officer, and, and B, possibly from the police. So it's it's a really, really great opportunity to interact with these supporters without coming across as a bit weird. So before we go on, I, I just want to make really clear that I think those things alone are worth moderating your groups properly because long-term support is so important for us as charities. But having said that, we all have income targets. So we wanted to know about the here and now and the immediate impact. So first of all, does engagement drive income? That's the, the title of our report and ultimately what we're exploring throughout this webinar and throughout the report. Secondly, can we justify that time spent on the group? There'll be very few of you whose sole sole job is to look after Facebook challenges and even few of you whose sole role is to look after the groups and the group moderation for that so can you justify that time spent on the group rather than working on all of your other other, other events and then finally there's time spent on the group and moderating your group but there's then leave, leaving no stone unturned so is it really worth going above and beyond in your group moderation so that has that does have a real time sacrifice so does that reap rewards so to give you all some context for what we did and before I go on I want to just just first of all thank you to everyone who took part in the research and a massive thank you to give panel two for helping us spread the word to collect so much data that was so valuable for us so we collected the data and insights from 35 UK charities who had held 78 challenges. Uh, the challenges took place between January 2022 and May 2023, and we used traditional challenges only. So traditional Facebook challenges are one month recruitment, a one month challenge fit, uh, and then a one month challenge. So we, we excluded anything that was maybe a weekend challenge or a, a week challenge because we didn't think it was a fair comparison. And from that, we, we analysed the key, key metrics. So the data that we collected from these charities was the peak number of, of group members, the pounds raised, uh, so the total fundraising uh, that they got from that event, including Just Given. And then we asked them to submit their total posts on the group, total comments and total reactions. A couple of facts, fun facts for you. So the group sizes range from 171 members, so super small, and um, all the way up to a colossal 28 and a half thousand people. Uh, and we average 5,000 people on there, a, a group size of 5,000. And these challenges raised on average 129,500 pounds. So I wanted to talk you through the key metrics and this will give you a really good understanding of, of what we're talking about when we go through the report and they'll come up time and time again. So to level the playing field for obviously to compare a 200 person group to a 28,000 person group, how did we do that? So what we did um, is we created these key metrics and everything's based on pounds per group. Sorry, is, is based on per group member. So we looked at pounds per group, raised per group member, posts per group member, 
comments per group member and reactions per group member. The formula we used to work this out was uh, basically the total number of the whatever engagement factor divided by the peak total of group members, and that got us our per group member um, per group member metric. A quick example, if you had a thousand people in your group and you had 2,000 posts in total, that would equal two posts per group member. So that should give you a bit of an idea and context to how we work things out. What we then went on to do is once we'd worked out all of those key metrics, we ordered challenges from most successful to least in terms of pounds raised per group member. So you can see here, the most successful was the challenge that raised £135 per group member. We then grouped them into data sets of 10. And what that enabled us to do was to eliminate any um, kind of huge outliers and outstanding performance performers. And so we took an average of each key metric. So if you can see here, we just shown you the first data set from one through to 10. We took an average of posts, comments, reactions, and pounds raised per group member, which created data set one, which showed us the average posts, comments, reactions, pounds raised per group member, and so on. So we did that for eight data sets. We then went on to plot each data set into, into graphs or into scatter graphs, and we added a line of best fit to identify if there was a correlation. Helen, so can I Sorry, can I just jump in? I just want to say to like to the group, I think this is value just right here, just understanding the metrics of your group. And this is something that like I know from working with GitHub customers that not, not everyone does. Not everyone uses these metrics and uses this model. So we're going to give you all of that kind of, uh, all of Helen's research. We've got like, we pulled out the key things today to show you with you, but that research is like, there's a model here that that you need to kind of like do for analysis for your own as well. Um, so I just want to say that I think you you've really kind of, helped and you've helped give panel with this as well kind of like come up with these really clear metrics around around groups and i think this is kind of this might be new for a lot of people on the call is this way of looking at things so i just want to kind of like just say that to the to, to, to the people watching it's it's important as well because you might have a group of five thousand people and a group of one thousand people and you might think the group of five thousand people is really busy but when you work out actually the key metrics, that one the group of 1,000 people was actually the busy one because of, of, of what the, the engagement factors were per group member. And, so, it, and it goes back to what you were saying at the start, which is, you know, how do we know that spending times on group is worth it? Well, if we can put it into pounds and pence, then you know, that's fundraiser language. We get that. We can talk to our board about that. We can talk to our fundraising director about that. So that's really good. And, and what we've done, and, and I'll mention this later on, we've we've created a benchmark for each of these four pounds raised per group member, and then polls, comments, and reactions. So that should be really helpful for you all. So we, we plotted these all into in the scatter graphs, uh, and we added a line of best fit to identify if there was a, a correlation. And like I said before, we rated them one to five, one being no correlation, and five being the strongest correlation we've ever seen. And in addition to this, and again, we, we, we talk about this in the report rather than the webinar, we look, we explored what top performing, the top performing, top 20 performing challenges had in common. So what we're looking for is this lovely positive correlation. So for each graphs, each graph along the x-axis, you will have pounds raised per group member. And on the y-axis, you will have the engagement metrics, so posts, comments, and reactions per group member. What we're looking for is for the line of best fit to go from the bottom in a diagonal line up to the top here. And we're looking for the data to uh, to, to kind of hug cl as close as possible to this line of best fit. We definitely don't want to see a negative correlation, saying the more engagement, the less money raised. And we also really don't want to see no correlation. And to give you all a, a bit of a spoiler, if there was no correlation, we probably wouldn't be doing, releasing this report or doing this webinar. So as a question to you all, we are, have seen some positive correlations. We want to ask you, and the poll should be coming up in your screen anytime now, do you think posts, comments, or reactions will have the strongest correlation and therefore impact on, on, impact on income? Okay, I'll do a bit of commentary or do you want to do the commentary? I'll do the commentary. You so the we, the comments is leading so far. Comments, we think comments is the biggest one. So comments being a comment on a post, I guess, right? Post being the post comments, themselves. Yeah. Comments. Reactions, reactions, not surprisingly, kind of like a heart or a thumbs up. 
is uh, a Maybe bit I lower. Maybe I should you on anything as well, post or comments. So seven, 78 of you out of 100 so far have um, filled in the poll. That stopped now. So if there's some of you that want to get in last minute, well done. Someone's going to send me So we've got 80% participation and comments as one with 77% uh, of the vote. That's interesting. What, what would your vote have been, Nick? Oh, I didn't even think that far. Uh yeah, I'm I'm a bit of a comment person as well. I reckon comments. Oh, certainly back in the day. I don't know if it's changed though. Yeah, cool. Right, drum roll. Back in the day being like 12 months ago. <laughs> yeah, it, it's first back the challenges the definitely feel like <laughs> decades past when it's just been a month. So we're gonna talk about posts first. So again, just to remind you on the axes for each of the graphs, you should all be able to see this. The pounds raised per group member goes from least to most, uh, from left to right. And then from bottom to top, you'll have the engagement metric. Uh, so we have 0.6 here and then the top of the scale, 1.9. First of all, just to talk you through the data sets, it should be labeled right away, but they're not coming up. So... Data set one, so this is the one that's more, raised the most, and data set eight is the data set that's raised the least. So we can see straight away that the data set that raised the most has also had the most comments, and we can see the data set that has raised the least has the least comments. We can see this really clear diagonal line. So if there was no correlation, it would just be a straight line. So a really clear diagonal line here. And then we can see that the data is, is sat around it. It's it's not all hugging dead tightly to the line of best fit, but they are pretty close. We can also see that data set three, I'm hovering around here, and data set, sorry, data set, yeah, data set three, and then data set seven, which is here, does slightly outperform a higher performing pounds raised per group member data set. So it has had more comments than the higher performing income data set. So we have scored this a three out of five for correlation. Next up, comments. So you, th those who voted for comments can all release a little cheer emoji. I can't I can't celebrate. I knew I have I've reviewed these slides. <laughs> I should have been like, if you didn't know what you already know, what would yeah. you Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, a reminder, questions, yeah, some questions are coming in about this now that we're getting into the research, so so fire in those questions. Yeah, yeah, keep putting your questions in and we'll, we'll come to them. I do I do, do enjoy. Hannah from Refuge, I've seen she's here. She uh, loves asking me a, a good on-the-spot question, so I'll look forward to hers. So for the comments, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I'm not going to lie to you all, when I did all this research and collected it, I'd, I had this moment of horror of just like, what if it doesn't correlate? And I've wasted everyone's time. So really, really pleased that uh, that we saw that correlation for polls, but we see this amazing correlation for, for comments uh, per group member. So again, really simply, the highest performing data set is at the top right, the lowest is at the top left, and we see a really clear diagonal line which, with each data set hugging really tightly to it. To, it's, it's, to be honest, exceeded my expectations of, of how much of a correlation we would see. None of the data sets also outperform a, a higher ranking data set in terms of how much they raised. So it just really shows that the more income raised, the more, uh, sorry, the more comments per group member, the more income is raised for challenges. So we, we gave us a perfect five for the scores. And finally, reactions. So we had a few reaction skeptics, but actually they're, they're not quite as perfect for com as comments, but they're not far off. So same thing, the the um most the highest raised per group member uh is pretty much with one exception uh had the most engagement. The lowest raised per group member had the lowest. All these data sets could really tightly to the line of best fit. It it this probably quite harsh. We docked a point for for this. I've got a little arrow on my uh, screen, but I know you can't see it. For so for data set number two, it outperformed data set number one in terms of engagement. So we gave it a four. It's probably a little bit harsh. It should have got a four point five, but we did. We gave it a four out of five with correlation. So scores are in. We've made a little a little league table for, table for you. So comments came in at five points. Reactions at four and posted three. So ultimately this gives us 
really hard and clear evidence that there's an extremely clear and positive correlation between the levels of group engagement and income rates. Comments are king. I hope you all like my little crown I put on top of it. And reactions are almost as valuable as comments. Posts are important, but posts alone don't have as much of an impact. And I'm, I'm going to come back to why I say posts alone in a second. Really, really importantly, you can all have a massive impact on this. So all of the data that was submitted uh, by charities included moderator, moderator engagement. We didn't exclude that. So just by commenting and posting on your group, you can have an active impact on those volumes and therefore the income that your challenge raises. And that's before we even go into any top tips. So your goal as a, as a group moderator working on your challenge is, is to cultivate an environment. So you want to encourage as many comments, as many reactions and as many posts as possible. And to do that, you have to cultivate an environment so that your group members think beyond their own challenge, beyond themselves, and invest in the bigger picture. And I've demonstrated this here. So you've got this, this little guy here uh, running on his own as part of his virtual challenge. All of our participants are taking on the challenge on their own, full of love for himself and his own challenge. He's got his own really personal reasons for taking on it, and that's amazing. But because you've cultivated a lovely, a, an amazing environment where your group members think beyond their own challenge, this is how these group members feel. Uh, so they're all running alone, but they feel like they're part of a team. They're encouraging each other. They're, they're thinking about the bigger picture of the impact that, that they can have on the, on each other, on the, on the cause ultimately. So they're all full of love for each other. So that's why I said I wanted to come back to the post element. If you haven't cultivated that team environment, you'll just get a load of posts on your group from participants. And you might, if you're if you're doing a good job, you'll comment on those posts, but you won't really see any other engagement from other participants. If you cultivate that team environment, this person posting at the front in red could trigger your comment and then five other supportive comments from the people who are in the group as well. And then this poster at the front might react to all of those comments. So instead of just having one post, maybe with one comment from the guy in blue, the person in red is commented, uh, sorry, is posted, and you've got six comments and then six reactions. And then the person in blue is now thought, well, what a warm welcome everyone's given me or how supportive is this environment? I'm going to comment, I'm going to post. So then you get another post and another six comments and another six, six, six reactions. So you stack up your engagement really, really quickly by getting people. And that's the key to unlock your income and your engagement on your challenge by cultivating that team, team environment. So everyone feels like they're in it together. So we've talked about how you can have an impact simply just by commenting and posting on your group, but how can you take it to the next level? These tips are all for the here and now in terms of driving income, but also maximize your, your medium and long-term support or experience and your attention. So they're a, they're a win-win. And we've also got a bonus tip for you all, which actually isn't included in the report as a, as a thank you for, for coming along to the webinar today. So first of all, to maximize posts, respond to every single post that you've got. So your supporters are definitely putting, them out, sales that, uh, putting themselves out there when they're sharing the group. Respond to them as you would if they're crossing the finish finish line, the London Marathon, as if it is an event day. So don't let their efforts go unthanked. So again, remember your comments con uh, contribute towards that total. You're giving people that recognition that they need to get that feel good factor. The, it encourages them to post again because they feel noticed and, and finally it encourages other people to post because they can see that they will be rewarded and it's not wasted time. How to drive comments. So this can be done. You can absolutely skyrocket your comments uh, by, um, by basically by posting content plans. And quick question for the chat. I'd love to know how many, how often you post in your groups. If we just say Time, how many times per week or how many times per day you post in your group. And if you just put that in the chat and Nick will keep track while I'm doing the rest of this. So we advise to post every single day in your group. In definitely include cause-related posts. 
definitely include fundraising tips and definitely include a weekly team fundraising total. But mix this up with other engagement drivers, really easy to answer questions. So these can be to do with the, or should be to do with the cause. They, they should definitely be to do with the challenge, but also something, some posts are completely unrelated to anything to do with the challenge or the cause. Remember, people are in these groups. Most groups open for, are still open for 68 or 69 days. That's a long time to pe pe keep people engaged if you're only talking, you're hammering them about fundraising. And remember, it, it, you don't always have to have a people about fundraising. People need to just enjoy themselves in the groups. So last week, our most popular post was what TV series are you watching right now? So aside from giving us as it all some fundraising some really good tips for, for what to watch uh, with our weekly uh, television, it meant that, so we had loads of people commenting and then we found that other uh, other group members noticed they were watching the same thing. So started chatting to each other about it. So again, it's fostering that team environment and realizing people have more than just the challenge in common. In common. So that's a really good example that you don't always have to have something strictly to do with the challenge on that. We've got, yeah, um, so, oh, we've on, got Nick. if you want, we've got some input from your question. Yeah, How I many times do you post a week or per day? Actually really a lot more variation than I expected. We've got mm -hmm. everything from three times a week, which is probably there's I think there was one that said once a week, but maybe one to three times a week versus two or three times a day. So there's actually nice. quite a big difference in um, in how you all the community of Give Panel and, and Alderson fundraising, how you all post is the frequency is very different. So we're not interestingly, there's not a kind of standard frequency. That's really interesting. I always think the more that you can never do any harm by posting too many times, if you do, the more the better. Okay, I was going to say last but not least, it's not last. Reactions. So showcase your personality. It, I've seen so many fundraisers, the warmest of fun in-person fundraisers turn really robotic when moderating a group. And, and that's not what we need in these groups. Keep it really informal. People respond to people. So work really hard to, to build that rapport, and make it an enjoyable place to be. And that will help boost the reactions that you get in your group by just being really personable. And then finally, for your bonus tip, like I say, this isn't in the report, but wanted to, to add this as a huge thank you. And this will actually improve the amount of posts, the amount of comments, the amount of reactions you get. Don't be afraid to ask questions. So people are posting your group because they want to talk. So asking questions will multiply your engagement. A really quick example of this is we had, we were looking after a, um, a, a, a Facebook challenge for a, a cancer charity. Somebody had posted saying they were joining the group that just finished their cancer treatment. Instead of just saying, welcome to the group, we're really pleased to have you with us. Our moderator went on to say, how, how are you doing? How are you doing after your cancer treatment? This person then went on to post some photographs before, during and after a treatment and let her know how she felt through those processes. Uh, our moderator then continued that conversation with them, but we found other group members congratulating her on, on getting through a treatment, saying how amazing she looked. So what could have been just one post and one comment turned into one post and 25 comments. And again, that shows how powerful posts can be if you deal with them in the right way. Okay, so what else are you finding in the report? So we have definitely only scratched the surface in the webinar. In the report, we have created our engagement and pounds raised per group member benchmarks, which are really, really useful when you're trying to compare huge groups to small groups and so on. To go hand in hand with this, we've created an engagement calculator so you can review how you sit against the benchmarks. We've added some extra engagement top tips. We've got loads more engagement findings and we look at also what factors can give your challenge engagement a head start because there definitely are some. And finally, we've just explored what the top, top 20 challenges had in common, both for engagement, but also key themes of how they run the challenges. So some key takeaways for you also, just revisiting what we wanted to find out uh, and, and what we've learned. So we wanted to know, does engagement drive income? So yes, there's a, a very clear and positive correlation between the levels of group engagement and income raised. Can we justify time spent in these groups? Well, yes, because your actions in the group can control that engagement and can boost it. And it would be a, a huge shame to miss that opportunity. And finally, is it worth going above and beyond, leaving no stone unturned in your group moderation? Well, yes, because by maximizing your group engagement, you're really maximizing that likelihood of increased income. 
next steps for you all. So you will all be emailed. So Give Panel are going to email you a copy of the report in the, the webinar recording. The report itself will have a, a download link to our, our engagement calculator. So have a read of the report and put the calculator to the test. And finally, let us know what you think. And you can book in for one of our free group health checks. These are amazing. We've been doing them for the last couple of months. Let us know in the comments if, you, if it is something you'll be interested in. So it's a half an hour chat either with myself or one of the team at Alderson Fundraising. And we will look at, we'll look at your group, we'll review your group. We'll tell you what you're doing a great job of. We'll tell you what you can improve of so we can share our insights as part of that and, and give you some recommendations to improve your, your engagement, your conversion, support or experience, or ultimately your income. And you can book in for that whether you've got a group of 200 or 20,000 people. So we, 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 we've done all different sizes and, and we know that everyone we've worked with so far have found that really, really valuable. Amazing, amazing, Helen. Thank, Thank you so questions. much. And we'll put the we'll put that the report and the booking link in the follow up email to this. Um, that so so everyone who's on the webinar and we've got loads of questions, Helen. So because of time, I'm just going to jump straight in. Everyone saying what an amazing webinar. You can see the reactions there. Um, so so we've got we've got seven great questions, but keep piling the questions in. You've all been very well behaved today. Um, around asking the questions in the proper format which so so everyone's like the zoom etiquette has definitely improved since my last webinar. um it's been a while okay so let's go um from the top so emily asks by posts in your research did you mean posts by the organization's page or by a champion for example or are we just talking i guess about like all posts doesn't matter where they're coming from um can you just give us a flavor of like what like that kind of yeah. yeah, no, that's a really good question. And I suppose it's, it's like a bit of a twofold answer. So first of all, it is all posts, all comments, all reactions. So whoever that came from within the group. And and secondly, just to mention, we we definitely recommend moderating from personal accounts. That's much better to build a, a really good relationship with supporters uh, with. So we would definitely recommend moderating and posting from your own personal account rather from the rather than from the charity's account. Right. So would you ever in a Helen Alderson managed group, would you would you have the organization brand in there sometimes, or would it be a hundred percent people from the organization on their personal account? We would we would sometimes post the uh the, the pinned registration post from the organization account, although we haven't done we're not entirely sure what has a better impact in whether it's from a personal account or from the organization yeah. account. But we think that's good to add a layer of authenticity. But, you know, at Give Panel, we believe the same thing. I think that's why we get on the two companies so well, is because we believe that it's like human to human connection is the important thing. And so if they feel like there's a person there, they're way more likely to engage in it if they feel like there's a brand. They love your brand, but it's not the same thing as a, as a person. So great. Um, other comment. Yeah, same same question for comments. So other comments by charity or group members. So it's both, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's from from everyone involved in the group. So obviously we not everyone who took part in the research was an Alderson fundraising customer. So there's a good chance that some of those some of those the, the data from there contains posts and comments, reactions from the charities. So but so just anyone who participated in the group was counted. And that's why it's so great. It shows that we can have that live impact on on our group engagement literally by engaging ourselves. Yeah. And I think like one of the things to remember, everyone, is that one of the reasons why this works so well, and I think one of the main ones is essentially people don't go back to Facebook all the time and go back to your group. They're parts of lot part of lots of groups. The way that they go back to the challenge and they maintain in your challenge is if they see it in their news feed. And the way they see it in their news feed is if you have a post in your group that has lots of comments and or reactions on it that that will go higher up their news feed obviously if you post nothing there's going to be nothing in their news feed to drive them back to the group so you've got to think of the group as this separate destination you're trying to drive them back there all the time from their news feed and this is why post reactions and comments are so important because they get people back to your group it's almost like kind of stewardship of your challenge in kind of like in that from that news feed um so yeah that's that's kind of do, do you agree with that helen yeah, I was going to say that's why it's so important to mix your content up because as soon as you start posting, if, if you posted a fundraising tip every day, whilst we think that's great, everyone will know everything about fundraising, you just, you ultimately you're going to bore people. People won't yeah. see that in the timeline again and think there's no point visiting the group. Whereas if people know every so often, I'll, I'll get that, watch your, 
what's your favorite tv show what are you watching right now they'll, they'll see that it's worth this oh there's some another interesting thing going in the group i'll join it and, and again so that's a really good point nick about drawing people into the group yeah newsfeed hacking um okay um ivan asks or ivan which i don't know how you pronounce it do you find that uh that two or more admins or moderators engaging with the group is more effective in terms of pounds per group member than one admin moderator so does it the fact there's two moderators in there almost kind of like add that kind of moderator to moderator thing and give you a bump rather than just having that solo one person moderating so it we didn't we didn't ask charities how many moderators they had on the group but just to give you some insight into how we work and, and why we work this way so we have three moderators that we put on the group every um, for each challenge we recommend that for anyone who works in house too the reason being is that if you have one moderator you'll burn them out straight away we we you should be moderating these groups between 9 and 9am and 9pm monday to sunday which is just unrealistic for one person to do uh, i moderated my my first group of, of 15000 people thankfully through lockdown so i had nothing better to do but that was just me and it was heavy going so definitely have three, two, three dedicated staff members on your group. So that's enough so you can create a bit of a road and make sure you stick to it. And it's, but it's not too many that people forget who you are so they can still build that relationship with. Yeah, I've, I've seen groups with maybe 15, 20 moderators on it and, it and you lose that familiarity. So keep it to low numbers, but definitely not just one because whether that it has an impact on engagement, I don't think so, but it'll definitely have an impact on yourselves as in, in just your own, your own health, basically. Definitely. Okay. Uh, Hannah asks, Hannah Gripson asks, do you think it matters whether the comments or posts in the group are largely positive or negative, i.e. fulfillment problems could be a negative example versus motivational messages? So uh, I think here we're talking about sentiment analysis and obviously we haven't gone that depth, but Helen, any thoughts about sentiment? Yeah. So a few, I suppose, anecdotal things to mention. We, we find that Groups where the supporters are really close to the cause, have been very closely impacted by the cause, are more likely to have more likely to have negative posts and conversation streams, and that's simply because they're so engaged and they care so much that can come out in very two two contrasting ways. So the the first one of the things to mention is is it's how do you deal with those negative posts, and and one of those in in terms of what you said there, Nick is making sure you get your fulfillment right. So you don't want your group flooded with loads of where's my T-shirt post. So how do you deal with those? So the first way is to make, like I said, make sure you get the, get the T-shirts there on time. Sometimes things go wrong and fulfillment doesn't work. So how do you manage that? Communicate that really clearly. And for example, what we do is if somebody's T-shirt is late, we'll go and check on gift panel. We'll give them an ETA for it. And we'll say it's, it's this many working days and we're going to turn off commenting just to, just so everyone else can see it. So that stops that those posts gaining traction and appearing in people's news feeds. And then people starting to switch off from the group because it's irritating them. So, so anecdotally speaking, it's as long as you deal with those posts well, it, it won't have an impact. But it definitely, we do think it has a negative impact and why we saw that some of the 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 lower performing data sets have a higher amount of posts because when we when we looked back from our memory of, of when we worked on those groups it might have been there was a fulfillment issue so whilst they had a load of posts those posts were negative so it didn't turn into income ah okay that's really good okay six more questions and they're all really good questions so let's go um we might have to stay over a bit but that's absolutely fine we'll keep going um are you okay with that Helen? <laughs> absolutely yeah um, i can I talk about group fair. moderation all day <laughs> Yeah, uh, Sophie uh, asks, what are your favourite posts, Helen, to generate good conversation responses? What are your oh, favourite posts? That's a great question. My favourite is, and remember, you can you, you don't even need to use the at everyone tag for this one because it works so well, but we use the at everyone tag once a week on, on, con, on content if we want to drive that engagement specifically. My favourite is, why did you choose to support this charity? And you get loads of... of of lovely amazing responses. why did you why did you choose to support yes yeah. the charity that's why did you choose to take on this challenge so Great. that works so Gold. well Gold. My, my favorite random post has I, and everyone will be able to guess this who's worked with us before uh is sunday dinner mash or roasties which do you choose creates the most the, yeah. the best debate ever so that's my, my my favorite random one but my favorite cause led one is is definitely why do you choose to support this charity and you get you will get hundreds of comments on those 
Yeah, I think that's like an overall overall um, learning there for, for people on the call is anything that is to do, like if you can tap, tap it into your cores even better. Um, so like we work, we've worked with like Surfers Against Sewage, for example, if you can find something that is this versus this and get a debate going. So, you know, um, would you prefer, you know, what type of beach do you prefer, like sand or pebbles or whatever? You know what I mean? It's like slightly mm -hmm. attached to their cause. And then there's the debate. So a debate post is really good to get comments going and people back into the group, especially when it links into the cause or the challenge is even better. But it doesn't even have to. It can be about roast potatoes. It's absolutely fine that it's just about roast potatoes or, or whatever. So that's good. And you've answered another question by doing that, which is how often would you recommend tagging everyone? everyone like at everyone tag you said once a, you do it once a week is there thinking behind that you do <laughs> for, i can't think of a more professional way to put this you, just, you don't want to do people's heads in and, and put them off and, and, and kind of spam them too much so we think once a week push two is is a on occasions is a is a really good time to do it and again plan how you're doing this so look at your group how we're, how we're doing for registrations for fundraisers set up for active fundraisers don't always do it on the same type of post. So don't always tag everyone in your fundraising tip because, again, you then start to bore people. So mix it up. Uh, and that we, we've got a great post. It says it's a it shout out to the silent group members. We know how hard you work and let us know how you're getting on below. And we tag everyone in that. And then that brings so many people out of the kind of out from the the, the woodwork, if you like, and, and start getting involved in the groups so of that can really boost engagement too. So I would say one maximum two per week and still mix it up. I think everyone's starting to see, Helen, how like hiring someone like your company to do the groups adds so much extra value. So that's really good. So you're giving away some amazing secrets and insights, which is wonderful. Um, uh, Kabibi asks, on the tips to improve engagement slide, you suggested a baseline of a welcome post and an additional post every day. Is there ever a risk of bombarding people with too many notifications and possibly losing group members? So when does frequency become too frequent and start to kind of bombard people? Well, I suppose another really good question. I suppose it's important to mention that unless you're doing that, everyone tag or you, you are tagged specifically in a post, you won't get a notification. So the, the the welcome post, the daily welcome posts that are used to convert registrations and um, fundraiser setups, in an ideal world, world, although sometimes Facebook can be a bit glitchy, will only ever tag you once uh, for when you join the group. So that's you'll only be tagged once in your welcome post and finally you should only be tagged once maximum twice per week on the, the at everyone post if again people can mute groups and things like that we've never really seen anyone become annoyed that there are too many posts on the group and if you if again if you fostered that great environment those posts will just be one of of many that, that go through the timeline of the group so i don't think there's any real fear and unless you sat on the on your group and spam 20 posts each day like we definitely wouldn't recommend that so for example we eat we aim for around about across the lifetime of the challenge excluding welcome posts we do about 2.5 posts per day okay cool uh, any tips for going from from uh cara any tips going um around going live in groups do you know what? It's something that not many charities do, but I think it's a really good idea. Again, everyone, so that's an example of when someone will get a notification from the group. We worked with, with it feels like a long time ago, it was last, a couple of, 18 months ago, we worked with, with St Anne's Hospice who moderated the group themselves, so we just worked to advise them. And their fundraiser every Friday did a, a live fundraising total announcement just when she was walking back from work, and that group's engagement was unbelievable. So it's definitely worth it because it lets people know who you are. So going live if you're not comfortable with going live just record a few videos put your charity t-shirt on say you're out for a walk ask what people people are listening to on the playlist so it's it's great again to get that really human feel so so going live i think is a great idea yeah and if you can go live um you can always delete it right if you don't like it <laughs> yeah I just be careful because if you if you have the go live function on it you will uh, be guaranteed once per challenge to get a live stream of a psychic medium on your group so so maybe turn the function off and on as you as you do it Good tip. Good tip. Um, I've uh, I have hardly been posting as as we are struggling to get people to join our groups. How would you recommend more people to join? I think that's a whole subject, Alice, of another webinar. Um, essentially, you've got to get your ads right and specifically you've got to get your creative of your ads right so that the right people are joining the group. 
Um, and that's, you know, that's not um, like ads uh, challenges as well as groups are won and lost with ads. And so you have to make sure you get your ads ads correct and you get the optimization dialed in. Um, the team, team at GivePanel can definitely help with that. So we'll, 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 I think we'll move on unless you've got anything to say on that one, Helen, because it's kind of a slightly different subject acquisition. Just just to reiterate what you've said, you, you can do the best, be the best group moderator in the world, but if your ads don't go well in terms of don't recruit enough people and or don't recruit the right people, you need at least 25% of people in your group to be fundraising, but you need the rest to want to talk. So if, if you don't get that right balance of people, it makes your job really difficult. If you get your ads spot on and then you're an amazing group moderator too, then the sky's the limit for your income. We're going to go for three last questions, Helen. Three last questions, the final ones. Charities with tons of people in the group, are they just letting anyone and everyone in? Um, because this this is actually a non anonymous question, but we spend a lot of time declining so many group members uh, because they're clearly setting up multiple fundraisers each month and a fake fake looking accounts. So talk to us a little bit about letting people into the group or not and what you think about that. Again, so this comes with dedicating time to your group. So we always set it up where people are auto approved if they've had a, an account for three months or longer, they, we then would individually review those who hadn't. So it's just a quick look. Have they got a profile photograph? How long ago did they join? So they don't have a profile photograph and they are, um, it joined five minutes ago. It's a red flag. If anyone has a bit of a top tip, if anyone has their first name as MD and then another name, they're always a scammer 100% of the time. So we outright ban those people. Okay. If it's someone who's, who's had a profile moving for 10 weeks and they're part of, of Bristol buy and sell and Bristol neighborhood what they're probably a normal person so you can tell then if you do you, you get two types of people uh, we call them t-shirt thieves but you get two types of people who who join the group and remember I said that 20 you just need 25 percent of your, the people in your group to be the fundraisers if you get someone who you've noticed has joined a load of groups and they haven't raised any money, but they're actually posting every day and contributing really well. Well, that's great because their posts and their comments are encouraging more posts and yeah, comments. Yeah, exactly. In, in, in yeah, so not, not, I, I totally want to double down on that thought, Callum, because we like to think that if someone doesn't fundraise, they don't have any value. And you have proved today that as long as they are contributing to reactions and comments and posts, they are driving value in your group. Yeah, and 100%. You don't, and I think the number one thing that 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 I see um, uh, customers get wrong is that by by making sure that everyone has to go through this kind of manual acceptance into the group, you automatically kill the slick user journey for the people that you do want in the group. And so, it you're better to you're better to kind of moderate moderate as you go rather than just like not let people into the group because. You're right there. They filled in the ads. They're ready to join the group right now. That's the when they're going to start their challenge. If they don't get into the group immediately, basically, they they even though they're good, they probably won't come back because they were in that zone then. And an hour later, they might not be in the zone. Yes. So that's that's a big one for me. We we do like we you also do get the bad eggs. So we have a list of of people internally that when we spot them in in the member requests or in the group, we automatically ban them for a range of reasons. So it's it's it, the, it you, you, we do draw a line, and that's usually at negative contributions or no contributions, which is what the t-shirt. But you get a huge amount of people who will contribute positively and 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 drive that. The, the biggest mistake you can make with your marketing is to only try and get fundraisers in your group because if you look at your top performing fundraisers and compare them. To top engages it's very unlikely you get them people doing both okay last question Stephen asked do you require posts sorry there are a few other questions but um we, we're kind of running out of time um you can get you where can they get you helen on linkedin or um, i'll bring a slide up next or i'll do it now um so linkedin email there you go on our website so there's Let a couple of anonymous there's a couple of anonymous questions there um, that we haven't got time for. So go to Helen. She's right there at the end of the email. Last question, which is just on what we were talking about is, do you require posts by group members to be approved? Or do you, so do you, do you wait for those to be approved by moderators or just like let the users post? A hundred percent let the users post, just like what Nick said about the supporter journey of letting people straight into the group. 
let them post. If you've just been out for a for a run or a walk and you're full of endorphins and you want to let the group know and then you post it and then you see it's pending and you've posted it when everyone's logged off, so you have to wait till the next day. That's killed your your buzz basically. And you think, well, there's no point in posting again. So we want people to have that immediate gratification and, and the way to do that is to not turn on uh blanket post approval again you can do it for some particular group members who might be specifically difficult but overall don't turn on blanket post approval okay awesome thank you i'm gonna have to stop there i know there's a few other questions i'm sorry that we couldn't get to everything but um this has been amazing helen um the feedback coming through is just awesome thank you so much for all the work and research you've put in and how generous you've been with that as well um we will make sure that you your watch out your inbox inbox for the um report and also um, the booking link for the for the free sesh that you can have with Helen about your groups. And um, just a lot of love coming uh, through for, for you, Helen, as well. I think, look, groups is where, is still where, you know, ads is where, where you can lose challenges, but you can also win and lose challenges in your groups. And we, as Give Panel, we highly recommend um, Alderson Fundraising to our customers. And we want, whenever we know that our customers are working with Helen, with, um, Helen it's just a massive great thing for for, for, for us. So um, thank you for being a great partner of Give Panel as well, Helen. And um, any final thoughts? Thank you so much for your time. We've overrun by a little bit, but that's probably to be expected. Thank you any for those good questions. Yeah, they were great questions. I love they? a good question. Yeah, and I love that, that we've got some answers. Everyone's in roasties in the uh, in the chat box, which really upsets me because I, I would always answer mash. But I don't think I found Oh, no way. Roast potatoes with the... Uh, oh, you're making me hungry. Okay, <laughs> everyone. We've all got to go and get some lunch now. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> we'll have some Sunday dinners. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Loved it. Thank you, Helen. See you all later. Bye.